Good evening and welcome to the Sunday evening service of the Port Norris Baptist Church in Port Norris, New Jersey. This is the 4th of July weekend and we're delighted that you have tuned in and uh, we are thankful for uh, each of you that are viewing us tonight and we pray that it'll be a blessing and an encouragement to you and uh, we realize by God's grace that uh, uh, our viewing audience is growing not in leaps and bounds but very steadily and we thank the Lord for that. It, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're looking at verses 11 through 16. 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. I want to read this, then I'm going to have prayer, and then we will um, uh, hear the word of God tonight in relationship to the pastor. But I would just like to hasten to say this. These things that Paul is writing to a pastor <clears throat> are also appropriate for God's people. So let's just look at uh, verses 11 and following. Paul writes to Timothy and he says, These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now, Father, I pray that you would make this a profitable time around your word. I thank you for it. I pray now, Lord, that you would uh, bless it. And Father, I pray that God's people will be drawn closer to you because of it. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me just remind you of a couple of things regarding this portion of scripture. Um, last week we began this, and I want to review for just a moment or two uh, regarding uh, this uh, scripture to just sort of catch us all up to date and get us all on the same page. First of all, he's talking about the challenge of the pastorate here. He's really talking to Timothy, the young pastor at the city of Ephesus, and he's trying to encourage Timothy. But he's also not only trying to encourage Timothy, but he's also trying to give instruction and direction of how, what, it, what it takes to be a good pastor. And I think every serious man of God uh, would take to heart the things that Paul is saying to Timothy. First of all, he says to Timothy, as we review for just a moment or two, he said, I want you to be thou an example. Where he says in verse number, 11, or verse number 12, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example. Now in verse number 11, he goes on and he says, these things command and teach. In other words, these things that I've taught you in verses one through 10 of this chapter, I want you to continue commanding them and teaching them uh, unto the people. The people need to hear that. And that's why I say <clears throat> this portion of scripture is not only appropriate for a pastor, but it's also appropriate for the people. So we need to make sure that uh, we recognize the fact that we need to be an example. The pastor needs to be an example to the people and the people need to be example to one another as well as to the pastor. So Timothy <clears throat> was about 35 to 40 years of age at this point. And Paul writes to him and he says, let no man despise thy youth. Uh, and so he says, don't let a man think down upon you. In other words, Paul was saying, Timothy, I want people to think highly of you. I don't want people to think down upon you. So there's a level of maturity that is expected by the man of God. He said, I want you to be an example in word. And that is in your speech. Notice what he says there. Uh, he said, be thou an example of the believer of the believer in word, in word. In other words, the words that you say, the words that you speak, how you speak to another person, saved or unsaved. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So our words are very important. In Psalm 19, the psalmist writes, he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength 
and my redeemer. So Paul writes to Timothy, he said, I want you to be an example of word, number two. He said, I want you to be an example of in your conversation. Now that is in your manner of life. He's not talking about verbal communication there, but he's talking about the manner of life. How you conduct yourself, Timothy, uh, how you make sure that uh, your behavior is above reproach, uh, that um, you are an example to God's people of, uh, uh, of your walk morally and your conduct is appropriate and it bespeaks of a disciplined life. And then he says, I want you to not only be an example in word and in conversation, but he said, I want you to be an example in charity. Now that word charity simply means love. He said, I want you to be an example of Christian love, Timothy. <clears throat> pastor, those of you that may be a pastor listening to me, God's people are longing for a man of God that will not just preach to them, but genuinely love them and care for them and be involved in their life as much as possible without being overly involved. People want to know, Pastor, that you care and that I care, and they need to know that. <clears throat> a pastor is nothing but a shepherd. You take a shepherd of sheep, that shepherd, that shepherd loves those sheep, looks after those sheep, feeds those sheep, protects those sheep. That's exactly what our role is. He says that um, in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 4, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So God wants us to be an example, Pastor, uh, in our word, in our demeanor, in our behavior, uh, and uh, uh, in our conduct one with the other, and uh, in our love. And then he says, I want you to be an example in spirit. Uh, in other words, that word spirit, most theologians feel that it's speaking about uh, enthusiasm. And the Lord Jesus said of John the Baptist in John 5.35, he said he was a burning and shining light and he was willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So John, was there a, ever a stronger preacher than John, a more direct preacher than John, a more powerful preacher than John? Only the Lord Jesus. And what I'm simply saying to you is the Lord identifies him that he was a man of enthusiasm. He said he was a burning and shining light. I'm going to be honest with you, Pastor. I was talking to a preacher just yesterday I believe it was <clears throat> in fact I know it was it was la uh, last evening and I said to him something like this I said I'm, I am so amazed at these contemporary kind of preachers it seems as if they're aloof it seems as if they're really not vitally involved in their people's lives or enthusiastic about their ministries and this sort of thing God keep us from that Lord help us to be men that uh, have a sense of enthusiasm. And then he says, impurity. Uh, he said, I want you to be an example in purity. In other words, pastor, conduct yourself appropriately. If I live to, to next year, I will have preached the gospel for 60 years. One of the most disappointing things I think I have ever experienced are seeing pastors who have been involved immorally with other women uh, in the church. It'll destroy a church, it'll hurt a church irreparably for years to come. Fellas, we need to keep ourselves above question when it comes to our walk before the Lord. And then notice what he says in verse number 13, as he continues giving instructions to young Timothy, and this is where the new material comes in. He says, till I come, give attendance to three things, to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine, till I come, give attendance. In other words, Paul full well intended to return to Ephesus, and uh, he full well intended to be able to see Timothy face to face once again. Paul did not want Timothy to become discouraged. He wanted Paul to implement the words of the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 19 and verse number 13, where the Lord says, occupy till I come. And boy, that's what we ought to be doing, preachers. And Christian lady and gentleman, we ought to be occupying until he comes. And so he says, I want you to give attendance. In other words, you put attention, you major in these three things. And he says, these three things are extremely important. First of all, he said, I want you to give attention to reading, reading. <clears throat> now, reading is important. Um, 
In, in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 16, the Bible says this, talking about the Lord Jesus. And he came to, the, to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. The Lord Jesus was stood up to read uh, the word of God. The Greek has two words for reading. One is for public reading, and the other is for private reading. The Lord Jesus, in this example, gave public reading. If you were, we're not going to, but if you were to turn to Nehemiah chapter 8 and look at verses uh, 2 through 5, you would see where there was public reading of the Word of God, and God's people gave attention to the Word of God. And uh, it's important that we understand that reading the Word of God is imperative. It's not only imperative that we read it publicly and that we uh, share it publicly, but it's also important that we read it privately. You show me a Christian that does not read their Bible, and I will show you a Christian that is struggling in their Christian life. If we're going to get the strength that we need spiritually, if we're going to be able to walk the way we ought to walk, then we need to be in the Word of God, not just Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I've often said over the years, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, that ought to be dessert. That ought not to be the main meal. You ought to be eating the main meal every day spiritually. I mean, <clears throat> let's face it, you wouldn't be satisfied with maybe just three or four meals a week. Uh, you, most people have breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, for the physical. Uh, how much more so do we need that for the spiritual? So it's important that we, uh, uh, that we uh, read the Word of God. Uh, the Bible says in uh, John chapter 15, the Lord Jesus speaking here, and he talks about how important the word is. He says, now you're clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. You're clean through the word. In John, sancti John chapter 17 and verse 17, it says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. What does the word of God do for me when I'm reading it? It cleanses me. It cleanses me in my heart. It cleanses me in my mind. It cleanses me in my spirit. The word of God. Thy word is truth. And we are clean, the Bible says, through the word of God. So you and I must have a disciplined Christian life. That is one wherein we are in the word of God. And not only are we in the word of God, but we need to make sure that the Word of God is in us. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. The implication is, if you don't study the Word of God, you are going to be a workman that is going to be ashamed. And then, notice with me, if you would, in verse number 13 of 1 Timothy 4, he says, Till I come, I'm going to be visiting you by the grace of God, Give attendance to reading and then to exhortation. What is exhortation? Well, we get a hint of it over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul writes, and he says in chapter 4, beginning of verse number 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Then he says this, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, I want you to preach the word. Once again, I just want to emphasize what I've said over uh, these months on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> I am dismayed at where I see the, the church today as to where it was almost 60 years ago when I began preaching. I see the church going off in every direction except the primary direction. I see the Church of God going off into uh, music, making music. I was talking to a Christian businessman just last week, and uh, he's dismayed at the church he's been attending. And the reason why he was dismayed, he said, Preacher, I'm so sick and tired of 45 minutes of singing and 15 minutes of preaching. He said, I'm used to that being reversed. He said, but all we have are, you know, the 45 minutes of just preaching, or of singing, excuse me, and then 15 minutes of preaching. 
He said, I'm tired of that. Folks, let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with singing. Singing is wonderful. Group singing, congregational singing, soloists, whatever have you, as long as it's appropriate music. But it's the word that brings conviction. It's the word that changes the heart and the life. And he says, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and beloved, we're here today. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're there. Now, maybe not in your individual church, and thank God, certainly not in this church. This is Port Norris Baptist Church. If you're in South Jersey and you're looking for an old fashioned, independent, fundamental, pre millennial, pre tribulational, Baptist Church, you ought to visit here. You ought to visit here. We're not moving doctrinally. That's all there is to it. We're, we're, we're staying by the stuff. But nonetheless, the Word of God warns us that for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I know of preachers, uh, I know specifically of one preacher who made this statement. He said he would not attend a church that had a Sunday night service. Now, can you imagine a preacher making a statement like that? He would not attend a church that had a Sunday night service. Well, let me tell you something, folks. I would be just the opposite. I would not attend a church that did not have a Sunday night service. I would not support that kind of ministry, period. <clears throat> so he says, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Be careful. Be alert, Timothy. Watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So he says, I want you to give yourself to exhortation. But then also back in verse number 13 of 1 Timothy chapter 4, he says, Till I come, give yourself, or give attendance to reading, exhortation, doctrine. <clears throat> exhortation and doctrine. Now, doctrine, we talked about exhortation. Well, what, what, what is doctrine? Doctrine is what we believe. Doctrine is important. Doctrine, doctrine ought not to be like scrambled eggs. Doctrine ought to be clear, concise, precise. This is what we believe. This is why we believe it. This is why we hold to it. Because this is what God's word says about it. Notice what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 2. Hey, well, go back to verse number 1 and we'll flow into verse number 2. Thou therefore, my son, now he wasn't a son after the flesh, but after the spirit, be strong in the grace of, uh, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who should be able to teach others also. He is saying to Timothy, Timothy, you've heard me preach. You know what I believe. You know why I believe it? Because God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, has revealed it to me. I want you to be faithful in committing these divine truths to other men who are faithful so that they might be able to commit it to others. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and uh, verses uh, uh, 1 and 2, once again, I want to refer to that where it says, I charge thee therefore before God. In other words, Timothy, God is aware of what we're talking about. You will stand before God and give an account of this. And the Lord, and before, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. And then he says several things. He says, Reprove. Reprove. I want you to reprove. What does that mean? It means to convict. When you preach, preach with power. Preach with conviction. So much preaching today is soft shoe kind of preaching. It's almost apologetic kind of preaching. Apologizing for what God says and apologizing for the standards that God expects. He said, I want you to reprove. I want you to rebuke. What does that word rebuke mean? It means to refute. You refute those that are teaching false doctrine. He says, and then I want you to exhort. What does he mean by that? 
He said, I want you to admonish. I want you to admonish when it comes to other people. In other words, this is what God says. We need to be doing it. This is, for example, <clears throat> I believe it's important for God's people to tithe. I believe, I don't care if you're working at Chick-fil-A or Burger King or wherever you're working. I don't care if you're a, a lawyer, an executive. We ought to be tithing Christians, every Christian. I don't care if you're on Social Security. You ought to be a tithing Christian at all times. Then look with me. if you that, and So what he's saying there is, I want you to preach the word and to exhort the people to be obedient unto the word. Then look with me, if you would, to verse 14. He said, I want you to be faithful. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Um, what gift was that? The gift of being able to preach the word of God. Now, we all have gifts, and we can check that out. I'm not going to look at it uh, this evening because of time, but you can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 4 through 11. It talks about the gifts that God gives to us. Some may have one gift. Everybody has at least one gift. Some may have two gifts. Some might have three. Some might have more than that. But we have been given the gifts by the Holy Spirit of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he said, I want you to be found faithful in exercising those gifts. Uh, don't neglect the gifts that have been given to you by prophecy. That is, by the forth telling uh, of, uh, of the men that were there at his ordination. Paul was at his ordination, for example, in uh, 2 Timothy 1.16. We know that he says, wherefore I put thee to remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul was there at Timothy's ordination. And what he is saying is that Timothy, I want you to exercise those gifts that God has given to you. And these gifts are important. Don't neglect the gift. These men, they, they, as they preached, they knew that God had his hand on you, that God was going to use you. And I thank the Lord for that. And I'm encouraging you, Timothy, to just preach the word of God and to be instant at all seasons. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We ought to give the more earnest heed. We need to be serious. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Give attendance to these things. We need to be uh, uh, giving them out appropriately and under the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And we need to be faithful in our preaching and in our teaching the word of God. And then in verse number 15 of, of 1 Timothy chapter 4, <clears throat> he talks about thoughtfulness. Look at verse number 15. He says, Medi meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditate. That word meditate is an interesting word in the Greek because it's really a picture of, a, of, a, uh, of, a, of an animal chewing its cud. And that's the idea. Don't race through the word of God. Meditate on it. Digest it. Allow it to be accepted into your heart and into your mind. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and verse 103 it says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet are thy words. In verse 97 of that same chapter, it says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. The importance of the word of God. Turn back with me, if you would, uh, to uh, uh, Psalm chapter 1, when it comes to the importance of the word of God. And let's just take a look at that, if you would, please. Psalm chapter 1. <clears throat> and notice what it says. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He shall be like a tree. The, the deeper we get into the Word of God, the deeper the Word of God gets into us, and it makes us strong. And he says here, he says, I want you to think on these things. I want you to give yourself uh, 
Notice what he says in verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. Give thyself wholly to them. Why? So that this profiting may appear to all, that everybody would be able to say, you know what? Timothy may be a young man, but what a man of God that he is. What a man of God that he is. And uh, uh, so that the, the profiting may be to all. Give thyself, literally, what he is saying. Uh, let these things be in you, and you be in these things. Let these things be in you, and you be in these things. Pastor, I said this before, and I'll say it again to you. You can never lead your people any further than you have been yourself spiritually. That's just the cold hard facts. So wherever you are spiritually, that's as far as you can take your people at this point. So let me encourage you to be found thoughtful and meditative. And then he says in verse number 16, as we close out, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Boy, isn't it interesting how Paul keeps coming back to doctrine? And isn't it interesting in this day and age how preachers are running from doctrine? Interesting. God's word is always true, folks. We need to preach sound doctrine, not what people want to hear. I've often said, preacher, don't give your people what they want. You give your people what they need. And what they need is the word of God. They don't need to be entertained. They've got other forms of entertainment. They don't need to come to church to be entertained. They need to come to church to hear, thus saith the Lord. So he says, take heed to thyself. Take heed to thyself. In other words, examine yourself. Be careful. Make sure that you are in the faith. And build your church, pastor, build your church upon this book. Not upon music, not upon the current philosophies that are out there, but rather build your church on what God says in his word. Let's have a word of prayer. I trust that this has been an encouragement to you. Uh, as we've looked at God's word. Now, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing it with these dear and precious folks, not only members and friends of Port Norris Baptist Church, but those that are well beyond uh, our geographical reach. And yet, Lord, they're not beyond your reach, and they're certainly not beyond the reach of, uh, of YouTube and that sort of thing, the modern conveniences that we have in the modern media. So, Lord, I pray that you would take this thy word, and I pray that you would sink it deep into the heart of some pastor, some deacon, some church member, some choir member. Lord, and I pray that should there be one under the sound of my voice this evening that has never received the Lord Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, I pray, Lord Jesus, that above all, they would quietly get alone uh, with themselves in a private room somewhere, kneel down before you, and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I need to be saved. I ask you to come into my heart and to save me from my sin. I receive you just now as my personal Savior and Lord of my life. And I receive you by faith. I thank you for becoming my Savior and for becoming my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.